We are now in section 9.2. You can see the title that says Polar Equations and Graphs. You see my little handwritten note on the side that there are many items in this section to highlight and underline getting ready for pre-cal. A quick intro to this section is at the top of page 586. And at the top of this, you see some paragraphs, and I'd like to go ahead and read through those, that just as a rectangular grid, so make sure you just heard that word, a rectangular grid may be used to plot points given by rectangular coordinates. So rectangular x's and y's, everything we've been doing right here, x's and y's, our life so far. When you understand where this point would go and this point, a grid consisting of concentric circles. They all have the same center, concentric circles. And then rays, vertices at what we're going to call a pole, can be used to plot something called polar coordinates. So we're going to go rectangular to polar. You and I are going to go polar to rectangular. We're going to play around with this. We're in the world of polar coordinates and graphs and equations. So it mentions a couple more things, such as polar grids are used to graph polar equations. And you see this one right here. I need you to know that in my lab math, I have uploaded three templates, eh, not really a template, but three sets of polar graphs. You can take these and print them or save them as a PDF and use them at various sizes. There are a couple of small ones to help you, or you can freehand these. Sometimes it's nice when you're getting started to play around with actual printed information. But in here, yeah, you'll, you'll notice when I do items, I'm just going to freehand them. When he does them, he freehands them. So just some information that we've been doing rectangular. We're now in the world called polar. There is a definition. It's an equation whose variables are polar coordinates. And by the way, polar, we've been used to doing... We've been used to doing x, y, and we're now going to have what's called r, theta, a radius and an angle. x and y, what we've been doing, we're now going to have a radius and an angle. This is going to be rectangular. This will be called polar. We will go rectangular to polar. We'll go polar to rectangular. We're going to play around with all of that, but back to the definition. The equation whose variables are polar is called a polar equation. Makes sense. It's going to have r's and thetas in it. And then the graph of a polar equation consists of all the points whose polar coordinates, um, what I just showed you, polar coordinates, satisfy. They make it true. So it sounds like what we've done before. If x's and y's made an equation true, then that was its graph. From here, I'm going to bounce back and forth between the videos in the book and then making some videos or videos in my lab math. So as you see here, we're finishing up this introduction, and then I'm going to send you on to watch his videos.